grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text, 2 Chronicles chapter 15, our theme, Are You With the Lord? Some of you, perhaps, haven't played the game of hide-and-seek for 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 years. Of course, if you have grandkids, it probably hasn't been that long. You've had a chance to play it again. I think I'm pretty good at playing the game of hide-and-seek. I can find good hiding places and I can keep quiet and keep still and be hard to be found. But if you play hide and seek with a really young child, it doesn't really work to be good at hide and seek. You'll just get abandoned, the kid will give up and go off to something else and you're stuck there hiding. No fun for the kid, no fun for you. So if you're playing with a really young child, as you know, you have to hide in a place where you can be found easily by that child. Our text talks about hide and seek. And for God, our text tells us that when he plays hide and seek, with us. He plays like he is playing with little children. In other words, God hides where he can be found, where he can be found by us. We look at this theme through the lens of our text. We do so in three parts. We see that Judah seeks the Lord that we seek the Lord and that the Lord seeks us. Judah is told to seek the Lord. Our text is in the time of King Asa. Asa is a great, great grandson of David. David and then his son Solomon and then his grandson Rehoboam and then his great-grandson Abijah, and now his great-great-grandson Asa is ruling on David's throne. In the chapter before our text, we are told that the first 10 years of Asa's reign were filled with peace. He ruled well and followed and sought the Lord. But after 10 years, the king of Ethiopia came, and his army was an army of a million men, a huge army, especially for that day. Asa has no choice but to go out in battle against this king and his army who is coming at him. But as he goes out, he prays. He prays to the Lord, reminds the Lord that it matters not the size of one's army when the Lord is on your side. He prays to the Lord and seeks his help. And the Lord gives a great victory to Judah and King Asa over the army of Ethiopia. And they get great plunder oxen and sheep and gold and silver, and they return to Judah. And as soon as they get there, we come to our text, where the Spirit of God comes upon Azariah, son of Oded, and he comes to the king. It's the only place in Scripture that we read of this Azariah, whether he was a long-term prophet or perhaps the Spirit of God came on him just for this one time, we don't know. But he comes to the king 
with this message. The king in all the land of Judah. He says, the Lord is with you while you are with him. The Lord is with you as long as you are with him. The Lord is with you unless you go running away under the umbrella of some other God, then don't expect that the Lord will continue to be with you. But the Lord is with you while and as long as you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. God doesn't play hide and seek to hide in a place that he can't be found. But he hides where he can be found, where those who seek him will find him. But if you forsake him, as Uriah says, he will forsake you. Wise words, true words, important words for Asa and Judah and all of us. As Uriah continues, verse 3, he says, For a long time, all during the time of the judges, Israel was mostly without the true God, was without a teaching priest, was without the law. The people would turn away. God would abandon them. Foreign nations would attack. Finally, they would repent, and God would deliver Verse 4, when in their distress they turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him, he was found by them. It happened time and again in the period of the judges. But in those times when they left the Lord, in those times there was no peace to him who went out or to him who came in, for great disturbances afflicted all the inhabitants of the land. They were broken in pieces, nation crushed by nation, city by city, for God troubled them with every distress. God abandoned them. God, in fact, distressed them that they might come to their senses and repent and return to him. And then Azariah, verse 7, says to Asa, But you, but you take courage. Do not let your hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded. And as soon as Asa heard these words, he took courage. And what did he do? He put away the detestable idols from all the land of Judah and Benjamin and from the cities he had taken in the hill country of Ephraim. It took courage to put away all those idols because there were people who liked those idols, who wanted those idols. But Asa knew those idols were false and he put them away. Not at all unlike what Paul in our epistle says to the Colossians and us. Set your minds on things above and put to death whatever is earthly, like sexual immorality and impurity and passion and evil desire and covetousness and anger and wrath and malice and slander and obscene talk. Put them away. They are idols. Though people love them, though people want such things, put them away. Take courage. Asa puts away the idols of the land, tears them down, and he repairs the altar of the Lord that was in front of the temple. That altar for burnt offerings, it always needed to be repaired. There were hot, hot fires. Hundreds and thousands of animals burned there. It would quickly need repair. And very often in the time even of the kings, it was not repaired. And so Asa now repairs the altar, rebuilds it, that sacrifices can continue. And then, verse 9, he gathers the people, Judah and Benjamin, who had allied itself with Judah, and, and people from the other tribes 
who had abandoned the north, who had abandoned their king and come to the south that they might worship the true God, that they might come to the temple. They knew that their salvation was worth more than anything else, even their homeland. And so Ephraim and Manasseh and Simeon, they reside among Judah. And Asa gathers all of them. And what do they do? They bring from the spoil they have just brought from Ethiopia, oxen and sheep and sacrifice and bring offerings to the Lord. And not only that, but they make a covenant, a wonderful covenant, a promise to the Lord to seek after the Lord with all their heart, with all their soul. And not only that, but in their covenant they say this, that whoever would not seek the Lord should be put to death. That failure to trust in the Lord would be a capital offense. Probably wouldn't work too well in our country, a country that has freedom of religion. But back then in a theocracy, it made perfect sense to live in a country with freedom of religion. It's, it's a good thing if you're in the dominant religion, but it becomes more challenging to live in a land where any and all kinds of false gods are allowed and promoted. Becomes not so much of a good thing, a more challenging and difficult time and life for us. But the children of Israel, they make this covenant. They would seek the Lord and they would put to death those even young, even old, even men, even women, whoever it was who would not worship the Lord. They swore with a loud voice, with shouting trumpets, horns, joy. For they had sworn with all their heart and had sought the Lord with their whole desire and he was found by them. The Lord hid in a place where he might be found, where he might be found easily by his people. Judah sought the Lord. The obvious message for us in all of that is that we too are to seek the Lord. As a nation, yes. As a community, yes. As a congregation, of course. As families in our homes, absolutely. And as individuals, certainly. The message of the prophet, the Lord is with you, continues to us. That same message, God is with you in your baptism, in the word. The Lord is with you while you are with him. In other words, it is possible to leave the faith, to reject the faith, to walk away from God. He gives us free will. He gives us that power. Grace can be lost. The faith of our baptism can be starved to death. It can be starved to death as we fail to come to the Lord's house. It can be starved to death even if we come to the Lord's house, but we don't listen, we don't pay attention, we don't think that word is of any use or value for us. Grace can be lost. We can forsake the Lord and he will forsake us. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. There is no middle ground. Either the Lord is with us or not. Either we are seeking him or we are not. Either we are trusting in the Lord or not. God troubled the children of Judah long ago when they left the Lord. And they were without the true God and without teachers and without the word. 
To be forsaken is a terrible thing. To be God forsaken is a terrible thing. Thankfully, God sent his prophets, sent judges back then, continues to send his prophets and his message to us today, calling us to seek the Lord, telling us where he may be found. And it's not just that we seek the Lord, but that we have a God who seeks us. A God who allows us to find him, who places himself in our way. And where does God hide? Let me tell you, our God hides in drops of water and drops of wine in crumbs of bread, in sacred words on a page. In other words, in word and sacrament, that is where our God hides that he might be found for us. He hides in plain sight. And yet for millions and billions, they can't see it. They don't understand, they don't believe. For us, our God hides that we might find him. And he hides upon a cross. The world thinks it's foolishness. The world thinks it's nothing. But the truth is, my friends, that cross is a God-forsaken place. A place where God forsook his only son that he might not have to forsake us. On the cross, we see love, we see grace, we see forgiveness, we see salvation. We see God himself taking our place, taking our punishment. God hides in plain sight, God hides where we may find him. And none of this, of course, means that, that without God, that we can earn our salvation, that without faith we can find him. But these words are spoken to us in the faith. God has come to us and graciously found us in baptism and through the word and made us his people. But as Christians, yes, we seek the Lord. We seek his word. We seek to know and to follow and to do his will. We set our minds, as Paul says, on things above. Jesus says, seek, seek, and you will find. Those words are true. And may the words spoken of the children of Judah be true for us. They entered into a covenant to seek the Lord with all their heart, with all their soul. They swore an oath with all their heart and sought the Lord with their whole desire. But you take courage. Words not just to Asa, but to us in our day. The Lord says to us, you take courage courage in the living of your life you take courage knowing the Lord is with you as long as you are with him and so we turn nowhere else we walk we go we seek nowhere else we seek the Lord and we seek him where he tells us on the cross in his word in his sacraments for there the Lord is waiting. There the Lord is waiting to give us his gifts. There the Lord is waiting to be found by us. To be our God. And to provide in every way. 
Are you with the Lord? Absolutely. He is here. Here today. That we might find him. That we might receive him. That we might rejoice in all these gifts. And that, my friends, is the way that it is. This 17th week after Pentecost in the year of our Lord, 2015. In Jesus' name, amen. We rise for prayer. In our prayers this morning, we also include uh, Matthew Zunker, who was in an ATV accident uh, this past week, hospitalized in St. Cloud. Uh, he's been able to, uh, to take some steps and do some walking and, and looks to have a slow, but hopefully a good recovery. Uh, we pray for Matthew, his family. We pray for Greg Payne, uh, who is uh, battling cancer. The Lord would be with him. We also pray for the family of, of Martin Dahl, um, who um, was at the flower shop and we prayed for for some time who had suffered a stroke and who died yesterday morning. We pray uh, for comfort for Martin's family. Also, we remember this morning in our prayers our brothers and sisters at Good Shepherd in Alexandria as uh, this afternoon they will call a new pastor to shepherd them. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks that you hide where we can find you. That you hide in word and sacrament for us. Give us a heart to always seek you there. To go to no other gods, to go to no other things, to place nothing else before you, O oh Lord. Help us to rejoice always in the gifts that you give. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray also this morning for those who do not seek you, for those who do not know you. We pray for the work of your Holy Spirit around the world, in every heart and life that is lost. That the Holy Spirit might draw them to you, might give them the gift of faith that they too might seek you with all their heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you give life and you take it. Holy and blessed is your name. We pray for your comfort, for the family of Martin, that they might lean upon you as their source of strength and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray this day for our country, that as a country we, you would cause us to seek you. We pray for our government, for our leaders, that they too might know you and seek you and your word and your will in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray that you'd be with those who have suffered from fires and floods and other natural disasters. We pray that your hand of protection would be upon all people from such things. And that you would work through such things to draw all people closer to you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the great physician of body and soul. And so we pray for the work upon all souls, including those in distress. And we pray for your healing hand to rest upon those who are ill. We pray that you would work all things according to your goodwill. We commend to your care Gray, Matthew, Paul, Jerry, Kelly, Pat, Colleen, Arlo, Lori, Bobby, Judy, Shar, Connie, Iona, Ruth, Adam, Linda, the unborn child of Heidi, Tom, Phil, R.C., Eddie, Aiden, Charles, Jackie, Lori, 
and all in any need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Holy Spirit, we pray that you would guide the people of Good Shepherd this day as they extend a call for one to shepherd them. We pray that, that you would enable the one whom they call to know your will. We pray, O Lord, for all congregations in need of pastors and for all pastors who are deliberating calls, that they might know your will. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We bring our offerings to the Lord. Uh, this weekend we are uh, gathering for our special needs fund. There are envelopes in the pew that can be used today or any Sunday to help those in need, as you are so led. We also ask that you would sign the Friendship Register in the red folder at this time.
all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord.
the table of the Lord. Simeon, page 211.
fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to seek and serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We join in our closing hymn, hymn 712. At the end of the hymn, we will sing verse 1 one more time. Hymn 712.
uh, next Sunday after worship. Also, uh, we're looking to get a new year of wings going, and uh, but we very much need a couple of people to help with the wings program this year. We have uh, a couple of good leaders, but we do need a couple more people to, to make this happen. So if you would be interested um, in helping in any way, uh, let Kelly know or myself. Um, we would appreciate that uh, very much. The Lord be with all of you and keep you in his care this coming week.